We have our legislative session that will start on January the 10th, and so we've already approved our legislative agenda, which is posted on the Georgia Association for Career and Technical Education website. Uh, we are communicating that with our members to make sure that they know about the agenda and that they're familiar with the issues as well. Um, the issues that we're going to be tackling head on always appropriations uh, and the funding for our programs at the state level. We've come through a, a period of time where we had funding cuts over the past 10 years and we shielded the CTE state funds from the proposed cuts uh, as much as possible. So when the governor would suggest a 6% cut or a 3% cut, we worked with the members of the legislature to reduce that by half. And every year there was a cut, we would always receive half of the proposed amount. It wasn't a victory in that we avoided cuts altogether, but we certainly worked hard to shield our, our budget from the recommended cut. And so as we head into the 2015 legislative session, funding is going to always be number one on my priority list of what we do to make sure that we have support for the programs, the equipment that we purchase uh, because the state does fund uh, purchasing of equipment used in CTE labs. Uh, we also have additional funds that we receive for extended day, which pays for all of the work that CTE teachers do outside of the traditional class uh, at the school hours. So funding, funding, funding. Last year we received a slight increase. Uh, our state revenues appear to be stable at this point to where I'm hopeful that we can see another increase this year for CTE funding at the state level. We also have a legislative initiative this year we're working on uh, that will affect work-based learning programs in our state, particularly uh, giving coverage for students who are under 18 years old uh, with employers who say they are not able to hire those students because of insurance regulations. And so what we're doing is we're working with the Georgia Department of Insurance and uh, the Lieutenant Governor's Office and the Department of Education to craft a bill and uh, there's a, a representative from uh, Floyd County named Representative Eddie Lumsden who is the sponsor of this bill. And the intent is to provide a carve out for those students who are enrolled in work-based learning programs so that these larger employers can hire them and get around the insurance regulations that are currently prohibiting or holding them back from hiring students under the age of 18. So that's another issue that we're going to be working on. Um, there's also several other things that are in the works that I've kind of caught wind of and we're, we have yet to see actual bills pre-filed before the legislative session starts, um, but uh, it, things dealing with everything from teacher evaluation um, to um, all of the other general education issues that we see come through the legislative session and they might not impact CTE directly but they have, uh, I guess, a side impact or uh, there's always unintended consequences that we're looking for uh, as we roll into any legislative session. So filtering through those bills, reading them and making sure there's no unintended consequences or they don't somehow relate back to what we're doing in CTE programs, we'll, we're going to be working on that as well. So the work-based learning bill, the funding for the state budget, um, there's several other initiatives that the, the governor has going the Go Build Georgia program, which uh, emphasizes the skilled trades. I know that's not all CTE, but it's certainly a big part of CTE, and, and we've been involved in that initiative as well. There could be some bills related to uh, Go Build Georgia that we might see during this legislative session, but again, the session starts on January 10th, and we haven't really seen anything filed yet, but I'm keeping up to speed on the different conversations about things that are out there that, that could affect us. Unfortunately, uh, more times than not, teachers don't view themselves as economic development engines. Uh, they are, and especially our CTE teachers, our CTAE teachers in Georgia, they are at the forefront of economic development. And so what we've been trying to do over the past several years in our state is to connect the dots with the Georgia Chamber of Commerce, with the Georgia Economic Developers Association, um, with whatever association that it might be that is any, has anything to do with economic development so that they see the value in our programs and the need for 
increased funding for the program, increased programs so that our students are college and career ready. But in Georgia, we've passed a lot of uh, tax incentives recently that encourage companies to locate and come to Georgia and receive uh, various tax incentives. It's one thing to offer tax incentives, it's another thing to have an educated workforce that has skills. And so the CTE, CTAE part of that equation is critical. And so everything we can possibly do to connect those dots and stay in front of those leaders so that they understand that connection is, is what we're trying to do at the state level. There's just, it's like, where do you start? But, um, but that's, that's, that's how we view the relationship of CTE and economic development in our state. And fortunately, we have buy-in from a lot of uh, policymakers who are seeing that connection now more than ever, but it's taken a lot of work and there's still a lot of work left to be done.